From Jeremiah Films comes these hard-hitting motion pictures now available on video cassette. Devil Worship, The Rise of Satanism, brings to light one of the most dangerous trends currently exploding throughout the world. AIDS, What You Haven't Been Told, a shocking investigation into the myths, cover-ups, and political manipulations concerning our planet's deadliest virus. The Evolution Conspiracy, a breathtaking documentary featuring leading scientists from around the world attempting to unravel the mysteries of evolution and, in the process, uncovering what may be the most incredible hoax of the century. Gods of the New Age, a fascinating and disturbing motion picture which traces the history and occult origins of today's New Age philosophy, from its beginnings in mystic India to its mass infiltration into Western culture. Fear is the Master takes you inside one of the world's most dangerous cults and reveals firsthand how recruits are brainwashed into submitting to a maniacal leader. The Godmakers, a gripping investigation of the Mormon Empire which exposes the deception of its massive political and financial network. Temple of the Godmakers continues the investigation of the Mormon Church and brings you inside the Mormon Temple as you witness secret occult rituals recorded for the first time ever on film. False Gods of Our Time, a four-part series filmed on four continents, which accurately provides insights into the confusing and contradictory religions of the world. Operation Tentmaker boldly tells how ordinary men and women have become missionaries within countries that forbid the sharing of the Christian gospel. The Witness at Your Door, a behind-the-scenes examination of the beliefs and motivations of those uninvited door-to-door -door visitors, the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Mormon Dilemma dramatically presents an accurate comparison between the Mormon belief system and biblical Christianity. A Song for Grandma, a moving documentary designed to motivate volunteers to visit the elderly lying alone and forgotten in our nursing homes. These are available to you from your local video retailer, or you can call 1-800-828-2290. That's 1-800-828-2290. California residents call 1-800-633-0869. Call today. Hello. We're calling in your neighborhood to tell people that the Bible has solutions for the problems in the world today. You know, we have divorce, broken homes, and sorrow all around us. But God has promised us a wonderful new world in which we will all be happy. 
If you have a few moments, we'd like to step in and demonstrate our free home Bible study. Well, <laughs> the Bible study is uh, free. There's no obligation. Yeah, all right. Come on in. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, would you like a beer? Uh, no, thank you. No. <laughs> Guess not. Well, let's uh, let's get acquainted. Uh, I'm Leo Stern, and this is uh, Ralph James. How do you do? And you're uh... Joe, Joe Simpson. Well, Joe, uh, do you have a Bible of your own? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. The reason it's hard for many people to understand the Bible is because of the archaic English used. Uh, this modern version will make it much easier. What we'll do is to read a paragraph from this book and then answer the question at the bottom of the page and then look up the scripture cited in your new Bible. <clears throat> okay. So, as you can see from scripture, in heaven, Jesus was Michael the archangel, and then he became the man Jesus on earth. He lived a perfect life, redeemed us, and after his resurrection by Jehovah God, he again became Michael the archangel in heaven. Oh, hi, Stan, this is Joe Simpson. Hi, Joe, glad to meet you. I I've heard you're in need of a job. Yeah, that's right. All right, I can put you on with my carpet cleaning crew. Really? You bet. Oh, great. Okay, okay. I'll talk to you. Nice after. talking to you. Thanks. Uh, you? Well, I think you're right, Stan. I want to commend you on your good progress with our studies. However, knowing that the time is short before Armageddon, you need to grow stronger in Jehovah's organization. I want to enroll you in the Kingdom Ministry School and uh, train you for the door-to-door -door work so that you'll be sure to be found in Jehovah's favor at Armageddon. I just don't know if I can, Leo. Mm -hmm. I, I know Jehovah requires this of me. I, I know I have to work out my salvation in his organization. So I'll try. But Good. I'm very nervous about it. I'm going to be reading from the book of Philippians, chapter... 2 verses 13 through 16. For God is the one that, for the sake of his good pleasure, is acting within you in order for you both to will and to act. Keep doing all things free from mum. Um. <clears throat> Hello. We're calling briefly in your neighborhood to share with you a couple of articles from our latest magazines, from The Awake and The Watchtower. This one has a very interesting article. It's called, What is the Purpose of Life? Isn't that what everyone wants to know? Soon well, I could do presentations at the ministry school the without stuttering and, and, and felt I was getting good training for going out in the field service. Brother Leo was a great encouragement to me and everyone was very kind and helpful. Cost of printing. Thank you. Would you like to make a contribution of 70 cents? Certainly. Soon the day came when Brother Leo took me out doing magazine work. Thank you. Thank you. I was sure I wouldn't do well, but the very first morning, a nice lady took the magazines and Brother Leo showed me how to fill out the territory card. Mm -hmm. That's Very it. good. That's it. Okay. Shortly after, I attended a circuit assembly and was baptized in symbol of my dedication to Jehovah and his organization. 
Now I really was a recognized Jehovah's Witness with Jehovah God as my father and his visible organization as my mother. I really had a new family, just as Leo had promised. Well, I wrote to Brenda and I told her about my faith in Jehovah and the organization and Armageddon and everything, but she's not interested. She says she's moving away and taking Lisa so that I won't be able to influence her. Well, remember, Joe, we're in her family now. You know, many times Jehovah provides us a new wife and a new family in his organization. Just look at us, Joe. Both our former mates refused to become Jehovah's Witnesses when we did. Now, our marriages broke up over it, but it didn't take us long to find each other in Jehovah's organization. And now we have a strong witness family. Would you like to be my Uncle Joe? <laughs> Hello. We're calling briefly to offer you these two latest magazines. This one has an interesting article. Look, I don't need this. I'm saved, and I'm perfectly happy in my own religion. Most ministry calls were routine, but a few of them stand out in my memory. Excuse me, sir. We're calling briefly in your neighborhood to share with you our latest Awake magazine. Now, this one has a... Okay. It has a very interesting article. Thank you very much, sir. I was proud to be persecuted for righteousness' sake, and it just proved to me that we were really in the truth. Excuse me, sir. We're calling briefly. Would you mind if we just kind of left that there for you? We can come back another time. The true servant of Jehovah must be prepared to be fearless in service. Good day. We're calling briefly in your neighborhood with... Stay, stay, boy. Stay, stay. Oh. In times like this, we must remember that he who endures to the end is the one that will be saved. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray for the Jehovah's Witnesses that are going door to door in my neighborhood. I pray, Lord, that I will be able to give a good witness to them. And Lord, I pray that they will really be able to see Jesus Christ in me and that I can show them your love. Good morning. Uh, we're calling briefly on you and your neighbors to share with you God's promise of a righteous new earth. Well, I'm so glad you've come. My name's Beverly Williams, and your name is? Joe Simpson, and this is my friend George Littlewood. Hello. Uh, as I was saying, God has promised us a wonderful new earth. Uh, did you know that this promise was in the Bible? Oh, please go on. Uh, Psalms 37, 10, 11 reads this way. And just a little while longer, and the wicked one will be no more. And you will certainly give attention to his place, and he will not be. But the meek ones themselves will possess the earth, and they will indeed find their exquisite delight in the abundance of peace. So you can see, Mrs. Williams, that soon all the wicked will be gone, and only the meek will remain. Please go on. Um, Revelation chapter 21 promises new heavens and a new earth. And uh, look here at verse 4. And he will wipe out every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. I'd like to offer you this book. You can live forever in paradise on earth, uh, along with a free home Bible study. I'd be happy to take your book in a moment, but I wondered if, first of all, I could ask both of you a question. You've come to my door because you really believe you're in the true faith. Is this right? Yes, we do believe we are in the only true faith because we are persecuted for our work of publishing the good news of the kingdom. Well, you know, you were so kind to share a couple of scriptures with me. I wonder if I might share one scripture with you. Did you know that the Bible has a test as to whether or not we're in the true faith? I have my Bible here, and maybe you'd like to turn with me to 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. 
Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test. And I'm so happy to tell you both this morning that I pass this Bible test for a Christian because I have Jesus Christ in me. Once several years ago when I was at a very low point in my life, I fell on my knees and I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart and he now indwells me. So I'll be very happy to talk with you again. Maybe you'd like to come Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock? Well, just a minute here. Uh, my Bible doesn't say anything about Christ in you. It says Christ is in union with you. Do you have an interlinear New Testament, Joe? You know, one with the Greek words above and the literal English words underneath? Uh, no, I don't have one, but I think I can get one at the Kingdom Hall. Well, why don't you get one and bring it with you when you come on Wednesday afternoon? And I think when we look at the original words, we'll find out that we really can have Christ in us. Well, I, I bought an interlinear Bible at the Kingdom Hall, but was surprised to find that the New World Translation had added words not in the text. We were told our Bible was a very accurate word-for-word -word translation. I wonder if I might ask you a question. Well, of course, that's what we're here for, to answer your Bible questions. Do you believe Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel? Yes, Jesus Christ is Michael the Archangel, and I can show you where the Bible teaches it. Well, just one scripture that actually calls Jesus Christ Michael the Archangel, it'd be just fine. Well, there isn't actually one scripture that calls Jesus Michael, but uh, we arrive at that truth by uh, a comparison of the scriptures. Well, you know, in Daniel 10, 13 here, Joe, it refers to Michael as one of the chief princes. That means he is one of several others like him. I believe Jesus Christ is unique. I can see here, Michael is not unique. Uh, Leo, what do, you, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, give me a few minutes. While we're waiting, uh, Joe, let's just take a look here also at Jude 9. Uh, notice here, Michael the Archangel did not dare rebuke Satan. Tell me, Joe, did Jesus rebuke Satan? Well, of course he did on many occasions. Is it possible then that Michael is who the Bible says he is, an archangel and not Jesus Christ? Uh, come on, Joe, we're uh, leaving. We have another appointment. <laughs> Oh, well, listen, I hope you'll come back next week at the same time. And Joe, you just remember, if you have the right Jesus Christ, you are right for all eternity. But if you have the wrong Jesus Christ, then you are wrong for all eternity. Hey. Why did you lie to Mrs. Williams? We don't have another appointment. It's best to leave when someone is not open to Jehovah's truth. Then why didn't we stay and show her the truth? What about her questions? Why can't we show her from the Bible that Jesus is Michael? I'm starting to wonder if he is. We will not be going back next week. She's one of those born-agains and probably has apostate literature against us. Come on, let's go. Hello, Ralph. It's Joe. Uh, look, I was wondering if you could come with me on a call uh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Leo doesn't want to call on this lady again, but I feel we should return one more time since we didn't tell her we wouldn't be back. Well, she has a lot of questions. All right, you'll come? Good. Uh, I'll see you then. Okay, bye-bye. So, Joe, have you done any more research on Jesus Christ? Look, Mrs. Williams, Joe knows very well who Jesus Christ is. He is the Son of God, he is inferior to the Father, and he is Michael in the heavens. You know, you Trinitarians, you make me sick with your freakish-looking three-headed God. The Trinity is a doctrine of Satan. Jesus Christ is not God. 
If I could prove to both of you out of the Bible that Jesus Christ is called Almighty God, would you believe it? You can't prove no such thing out of the Bible. Well, let's open our Bibles then to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. And let's read it together. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Who is this? That's plain for anyone to see. That's Jehovah God. My Bible says Jehovah God. Joe, I see that you're using your interlinear Bible. Does it say Jehovah God in the original Greek? No, it says Lord God. You obviously believe this scripture refers to Jehovah God since your Bible has inserted that word there. Well, it, it must be Jehovah God since it is the Almighty speaking. Well, we're all agreed it's the Almighty speaking. So can we all agree that the Almighty calls himself the Alpha and Omega here? Well, yeah. Let's turn over to Revelation chapter 22 and see if we can get further identification on who the Alpha and Omega is. And we must always be sure to read scriptures in their context. So let's pick it up in verse 12. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the immoral persons, the murderers, and the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. So notice that the Alpha and Omega, the speaker, identifies himself as I, Jesus. No, the speaker changes. Verse 12 is Jesus, uh, verse 13 is Jehovah, and, and the other verses are, are Jesus again. Besides, according to my reasoning book here, the Alpha and the Omega is, is Jehovah God. Now, there was a time when we did teach it could be Jesus, but this, this is the newest light. Well, although your reasoning book may teach that Jesus is not the Alpha and Omega, Jesus himself says right here that he is the Alpha and Omega. However, could we all agree, based on verse 13, that the Alpha and Omega gives himself the title, the first and the last? Yes, verse 13 clearly has the Alpha and Omega calling himself the first and the last. Then let's turn back to Revelation chapter 1 and see if we can get further identification on the first and the last. Revelation 1 verses 13 to 18 contains the vision of the Son of Man. Who is this? That's Jesus, of course. Right. And if we read down through the vision to verses 17 and 18, we can clearly identify the first and the last. Look what the Apostle John says in verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one, and I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Who is this? It's Jesus Christ. You are right. It is Jesus Christ. And by his own words, he is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and Almighty God. And it is Jesus who is speaking in Revelation 1.8 that we began with. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, Jesus Christ, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Who are you going to believe, Joe? Jesus Christ or the Watchtower publications? We have to be going, Joe. We have another appointment. Uh, excuse me, uh, who is this appointment with? Where well, are you going? Uh, we just, we have another appointment. Now look, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you have another appointment. Do you think it's right to lie to get out of a Bible discussion? Why don't you stay a few more minutes and let's look at other scriptures calling Jesus God? I'm staying. Okay then, let's turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And yet for this reason I found mercy, in order that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. 
now to the king eternal, not created, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Who is this? Well, well verse 16 is Jesus, and verse 17 is Jehovah. If this were so, this amen here would be one verse sooner. And in the early manuscripts, there were no verse divisions. This refers to Jesus Christ and calls him eternal and the only God. Now let's continue on with some more. Joe, we've invited you to this meeting out of a concern for you. We've noticed a tendency on your part to be a bit rebellious to Jehovah's organization. You should not have invited Brother Ralph to go with you on another call to Mrs. Williams after I told you we would not be going back. Now, Brother Ralph confirms that everything she said to you was right out of Christendom. We want your word now that you will never go back to her house. And if you do, you will face disciplinary action by this committee and possible disfellowshipping. You would not want to spend the rest of the time remaining before Armageddon to be cut off from all of us with no one to speak to and facing Jehovah's destruction. I'm sorry, brothers. I... She only spoke out of the Bible. I, I thought we could discuss the Bible with people. I won't go back to her house. Ah. Oh. Uh, while you're here, uh, could I ask your advice on another matter? I'd like you to listen to this letter from my wife. Dear Joe, since Lisa and I left you, I have done my best to start a new life for myself. However, I have never stopped loving you, although we could not seem to make a go of our marriage in the past. I was almost ready to return when you sent the news that you had become a Jehovah's Witness and this is what you saw for your future. I know I could never be one, as I could not sing raising Lisa with no Christmases, no birthday celebrations, and no family gatherings on holidays, since Jehovah's Witnesses consider all these things wrong. I was so miserable that I even prayed to God for help. One Sunday, I took Lisa and went to church there, the pastor gave us an invitation for all those who would like to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior to come forward. With tears in my eyes, I asked God for forgiveness of my sins and asked Jesus to give me a new life. Joe, God has been faithful to come into my heart when I invited him in and now dwells in me. Joe, I just know that with Christ in our hearts and in our home, we could be a happy family once more. Please write and tell me you still love me and want us all together again. I love you, Joe. Lisa sends her love. And most importantly, Jesus loves you too. We're anxiously waiting for your reply. Love, Brenda. Well, brothers, what should I do? You see, I want my family back very bad. Joe, if she wanted a reconciliation and was willing to serve Jehovah, of course, we would encourage you to have her back. Or, or Joe, if, if she was just a worldly person, uh, but willing to let you remain a Jehovah's Witness without interference, even then we would let you take her back. Joe, this will be hard for you. It would have been better if you had taken a sister to be your wife in the organization. Jehovah has provided you with plenty of single sisters to choose from, but you never did. Yes, I never did, because I love Brenda. And I always prayed we'd be together again as a family. I'm sorry, brothers. I need more time to think about this. Joe, Joe, you can't take her back, Joe. She, she's a born again like Mrs. Williams. So you must remain loyal to Jehovah's organization. She's of the devil, Joe! Lisa. Daddy, Daddy. Oh, Joe, I tried to wait for your 
letter. But I just felt the Lord was leading us to come. You did the right thing. Brenda, I'm so confused. I dedicated my life to Jehovah God. I've done all the things his organization expects of me. I've gone to five meetings a week. I met quotas out in field service. I always felt everything was perfectly right until just lately. Now I'm having my doubts. The elders won't be happy with me now that you're here. And then there are all those questions Mrs. Williams raised. Don't be upset with me. I sent off for some information from some people that used to be Jehovah's Witnesses. But they left when they found out the leaders of the Watchtower were false prophets. Did you know that for more than a hundred years they've been falsely prophesying the end of the world? All these references are from the Watchtower publications. Wouldn't you be willing to check this out in the Kingdom Hall Library? Maybe I should have done more investigation at the start. I wish we could just talk to Mrs. Williams. But I gave my word I wouldn't go back to her house. Why can't we invite her to our house? You never promised we couldn't do that. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you now to anoint me with your Holy Spirit for this encounter. I take my authority as a believer in Jesus Christ, and I bind that spirit of deception operating in Joe's life. I ask you, Lord, to convict him of the error of his ways and welcome him into your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I can no longer deny Jesus is called God in the Bible because I did what you suggested. I, I got a concordance and I looked up every scripture. I also proved to myself that there is only one true God. I know Jesus cannot be a God or an extra God, but I still don't understand why Jesus said in John 14, 28, that the Father was greater than him. Doesn't that make Jesus inferior as the Watchtower teaches? Well, remember, Joel, how we proved from the Bible that Jesus Christ is Almighty God and the only God? Yes, and I believe the Bible is true. Well, when dealing with the subject of Jesus Christ, we have to consider two aspects. One is the deity of Jesus Christ, that is, that he is truly God. The other aspect is that he is truly man, his humanity. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, and let's begin reading together in verse 5. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses immediately ignore the first phrase, take the second one, and say, you see, he, he didn't even want to be equal with God. He wanted to be inferior. But that's not what the scripture is saying. Instead of Jesus grasping after what he already had, he did something else instead. And picking it up in verse 7, if you follow along, he did this. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So Jesus, although he never ceased being in the form of God, at a certain point in time, and for a little while, he emptied himself, he humbled himself, he took the form of a man, and he functioned perfectly as a man to buy back what Adam had lost. You know, I think Colossians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9 will clear up that wrong teaching from Jehovah's Witnesses that Jesus was only a man on earth. Would you like to read that, Joe? See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. In him, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. All is all, full is full. Christ is truly deity, even in the flesh. 
It's no wonder that Acts 20, 28 says that God purchased the church with his own blood. Jesus, I always believed that I couldn't pray to you, but now I am. And although I don't know all the answers, I trust in you. I'm asking you now to come into my life and into my heart and reveal yourself to me. If I have been in a false organization, please forgive me and show me the way to go to serve you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me back my wife and my daughter. Give me the strength to face the elders. And thank you for your free gift of salvation, which I gladly receive. Amen. Leo, Ralph, you mind if we come in? No, not at all. We've missed you at the meetings the past two weeks, Joe, and we're concerned about you. And you haven't turned in your field service report this month. I've been preparing myself for a meeting with you. I've gotten back together with my wife, Brenda, and have been devoting every spare moment to Bible study and research into the organization. Where are the Society's publications, Joe? I've set them aside for the moment to study the Bible alone. You can't understand the Bible apart from the Society's publications. If you study the Bible alone, you could become an apostate, or worse, a born again. I suspect he already is an apostate. Have you been reading apostate literature, Joe? I've examined photocopies of Watchtower publications, showing me that they have falsely prophesied in the name of Jehovah God many times. Now, perhaps you would like to check these out. Come on, Ralph, we're leaving. You'll be hearing from the committee on this, Joe. No, no, I don't think I will. Here is my official letter of disassociation from you, including the reasons why. Not the least of which is that you deliberately misrepresented the person of Jesus Christ to me. And I've given my life to him, and I will no longer serve your false organization. Austin. Don't be late for your next appointment. <laughs> 